this is Tom Myers from Bellevue, Iowa, coming to you with this week's uh, Believe in the Blue update. It's a board meeting update from last Monday evening, October 14th. just want to give you a few highlights of that meeting. We had the consent agenda <coughs> and a few things like that. We approved a few open enrollment requests that way for next school for this school year. Uh, we also had some recommendations to hire. One of those was our new first grade teacher, Olivia Witt, who actually started uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, talked about it at the board meeting in the last meeting to that was to add a third section of first grade, which is a great thing for our district that way. And, uh, and Olivia Witt is doing an outstanding job in that position. She joins Lisa Roth and Emily Ray uh, as first grade teachers that way. And we have three sections of kindergarten and three sections of first grade right now uh, based on student numbers. We also went Matt Yeager to full-time um, high school student council that way. Uh, as, as for a full role, that was a sponsorship. They were splitting with another individual who is no longer with us that way. Uh, so we increased that. And then we also added, uh, added Brent Rowling as a bus driver. He had drove for, dri driven for us in the past, but had since uh, left and now has come back again. We had the Comet Curriculum uh, presentation by Chris Kellogg along with a couple students, uh, uh, Bryden Cummings and Grace Raker. They did an outstanding job of sharing what happens in makerspace that way and it's all about the creativity communication critical thinking and aspects like that that way to really get people thinking and to allow them that <clears throat> that opportunity for creativity in their learning <clears throat> excuse me we also had an athletic program overview uh some representatives from marquette catholic or um, um were at the meeting and they presented a proposal or uh, a request to share the 7 through 12 football program. That program has not been shared since the 1984 through 1991 school year that way, and it was uh, stopped at that time based on um, based on numbers and enrollment that way in the program overall. Some points that uh, that Bellevue Marquette made were there's several students uh, from Marquette who say they're interested in it, on, on down to the elementary level through middle school and up to high school. The one factor that was, was also brought in there there are several things discussed, but one factor brought up by adding, Mar um, by adding Bellevue Marquette to the program, it would potentially raise, um, raise the Bellevue High School football program to Class 2A. It's in 1A right now. There's also a chance that we will be in Class A next year for football. The reason I say there's a chance because they don't come out with those numbers until uh, January. So after everyone has turned in information, that information ought to be turned in by the end of, no end of November and November 26. But we don't know what the addition of numbers would mean. Right now in grades 9 through 11 in Bellevue High School, we have 163 students. Uh, at Bellevue Marquette, they have 47 students. And that would put us right at the border of where the cutoffs were in the past. The last year, the cutoff was 166 students uh, uh, for Class A. Uh, make sure my notes are right here. 166 students that way, and we just don't know what that will mean as a whole of where that uh, cutoff will be for us. So right now, we look like we could be dropping to Class A without anyone joining us. So also then some discussion about only having a uh, only having middle school. And that is a possibility, uh, although looking at the, de at the development of the program and individuals in the program, it, it has some, some questions raised by both uh, the Bellevue Community School District and Bellevue Marquette both. Um, so we've had some discussion. No decision was made, and we will move on in a uh, manner after the fact that way or afterwards about this that way and see where we're at that way. Um, some other information here. We had Comet School Finance. Um, Actually, Penny Meeninger shared the certified annual report, which shows uh, all of our funds, what those monies, what those funds have been spent for, and everything like that. That way, we came out on the positive side in both our general, uh, I guess, in our general budget overall, we came out on the positive side. Actually, increased our unspent, uh, unspent uh, budget or our spending authority. Actually, increased, which is positive. I discussed uh, some enrollment things going on that way. We are up in enrollment by. Certified enrollment by about five students, which is good news for us. But over the uh, last five years, just to give you an idea here, elementary K through five has increased by 15.6 percent from 250 to 289 students, and that's K through five. Our middle school, high school has went from 374 to 384 of that same time span, a 2.6 percent increase. And preschool, three and four year old preschool had our largest increase. That's a 29.6 percent increase from 71 to 92, and then all areas PK through 12, we went from 695 students to 765 students, which is also a significant in increase at 
10.1%. So just wanted to share that information. I'll have some of the enrollment stuff online, too, uh, that you can look at as well. Uh, we'll also talk about the physical plan and equipment levy. That will come to a vote in November here. It's a renewal of it. It's not a new tax. It's, it's just a continuation of what is there. The physical plan equipment levy has to be done every 10 years. That way, it's been in place in the Bellevue Community School District for the last 17 years that way. So just to let you know that, it's first approved in 2002-2003 school year. There will be an ad in the paper about that. Another thing, and, and that money is really used for facilities that way, making improvements. Uh, in the past, we've used to purchase school buses, uh, technology and infrastructure improvements, security improvements to buildings, hallway lighting, parking lot resurfacing, things like that we've used it for. It cannot, it can only be used for the physical plant, the actual buildings and the surrounding grounds that way. It cannot be used for salaries. It doesn't go to salaries and that's the main thing it does not go to that way. It's strictly for physical plant uh, and equipment as it says that way. Um, we also talked about some other things with facilities and looking at options for next year as we move from a K-1 with, two se with three sections to likely a first and second grade with three sections and an incoming kindergarten, which will have three sections. And finding space for that, I have options A through J, A through uh, I actually uh, listed uh, on the document here. And I'm not going to go through all those, but some of those include knocking out some uh, partial walls, uh, remo moving some people around into the cafeteria, having lunch on the wood floor in the gym. Uh, doing some different things, actually looking at having some portables or modulars uh, placed on the elementary grounds that way. And we're just looking at those options. We need to make some decision at the beginning of, of the 2020 school, uh, the, the year 2020, next, I'd say next January, February, just as a whole. So just so you kind of have an idea that way what's going on. Also shared how funds can be used and how they cannot be used. It's a nice little graphic here that is in the comment highlights and you can look at that if you want that way. Also talked about Russell Construction, did a facilities cost analysis for us uh, that uh, people requested what kind of materials are actually going to be used. That's all listed in there. We are actually meeting with, uh, 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 with some local contractors in the future here, and we'll present some of this information to the public as well, or all this information where everybody wants to see. That was one of the things that people said they wanted to see what the costs were and what were things being used for getting to this cost, how did you get to this cost, what kind of materials are being used on online. So we're working on that and we'll get that to you. Uh, future election dates, if we would ever do anything a, or when we do do something to the uh, current elementary or new elementary, election dates for the 2020 uh, year are the first Tuesday in March and the second Tuesday in September. Uh, that changed a little bit from previous years, so that's when they are this upcoming year. So. Technology-wise, we approved some iPads for the first grade that way. We're purchasing about 60 iPads for our students there. Uh, the iPads we've had are about 8 to 10 years old, depending on the ones that a student is using, and that is good life. So we are getting some more of those. We'll also be getting some more Chromebooks next year for the third grade, but we did not approve anything like that right now. That's just uh, as we move through the year, looking at technology needs and kind of following our plan we have set up. I also talked about the Jackson Clinton County Regional Center update, more for career tech and educational classes that way. Uh, they're talking about having a referendum there for the Eastern Iowa Community College District, which spans all the way from Clinton Community College in our area all the way down to the Muscatine Community College in the southern part of the area that way, and that will likely be in September. Looking at potentially building a uh, new uh, regional center for high school students and others, but mainly high school students in the Clinton area, uh, or in the Clinton County area, let's put it that way, uh, Jackson County and Bellevue. I've been an ad I've been an advocate for saying we need something in Jackson County. It's not just Clinton County. To say that uh, that Bellevue would transport students to a center in Clinton County is stretching it. Based on our our distance from there, you're looking at basically 45 minutes to an hour, no matter no matter where it's located at, and that's only one way. And that's a lot of wasted time that I just do not feel would be right. And I know the other Jackson County superintendents feel the same. And we have been advocating for something to be done in Jackson County, whether that's in Maquoketa or somewhere else. Ideally, it would be Bellevue. Uh, but being at the northern end of the region, I, I doubt if that will happen. But uh, we are offering some courses that way with the electricians and this, with the electricity uh, to be a certified electrician, getting some starts on that for students right now, along with some welding courses that way so, and some other things too that way. 
We also talked about modified allowable growth. Uh, Student Budget Review Committee will make an application of that. The board approved that where the, the, where the district can ask for spending authority for students that come into the district, move into the district, but return to their former district. It's an annual thing we do every year. We comment reading and reflection, the impact, impact of socioeconomic status on students that way, and just having a talk about that, a real short um, excerpt of an article of how socioeconomic status or poverty impacts learning maybe as much as anything at all that way. I also talked a new uh, state assessment, which we took those in February, March, and April last year throughout the state. Uh, Bellevue schools took them in March. We have not got results back yet, which is a whole other story that I won't get into right now. We will get those results back. Uh, every, school, every school district in the state of Iowa will get those results back in October that way. So later this month, so I say October, it's supposed to be October 23rd, but I do not know if that is the exact date or not, if when it actually will be released. But I will keep you posted on that. I, uh, IASB legislative priorities, we talked about that way for the school board convention in November. Uh, talked about attendance at, at that conference as well. Talked about the elections coming up on November 5th and uh, the, uh, the candidates for that. I think you probably know that they are uh, two incumbent candidates, uh, Kevin Lundin, who is currently school board president, and Janet Sieverding, who is the incumbent, also as a vice president that way. And then other people, uh, Rhonda Anderson, Jacob Olert, Marty Plussell, Josh Richter, and Matt Wedeking. So you kind of know that. There's a district needs assessment out that way as well. I encourage you to fill that out. There's a link on our website to that. It'll also be in the newspaper this week. Also sent out to all parents via email. And then we have some comments from the building principals and myself that way. Jeanette Hartung Schrader talked about some grants that have been received for busing to some uh, events, whether that th those are all for learning events, whether those culture events at the University of Dubuque or an another learning event. Um, at the Onward Center in Maquoket or similar areas. Jeff Raker talked about how all sophomores will be attending a manufacturing day on, two, on, excuse me, on Wednesday, October 16th in Maquoket. I believe that's good to let them know what is happening out there and that a manufacturing plant is not just an assembly line. There are HR people, there are accountants, there, there's leaders, there's different uh, areas of interest there and you need engineering, you need some schooling for many of those jobs. So we'll be going to that on Wednesday, October 16th. And then we also talked about the weekly shout-outs that he has and the positive sign Thursday at the middle school, high school that way, recognizing students for the great accomplishments that, that they're um, uh, experiencing in school that way, what they've accomplished, along with positive sign Thursday, just a kind of a self-esteem type thing that way. Uh, Mr. Raker stands outside the building every Thursday with a sign. Maybe you've seen that on Facebook or Twitter, but it's a really neat idea he picked up. I also shared the FBL, FBLA group of Bellevue Community School District will be involved with the coffee shop at the uh, uh, at the old button factory. That way they will not be running it, but they will be helping to operate it that way and looking at marketing and cost and things like that that way. And the next meeting is on Monday, November 11th, 2019. That's at 630, and that will be with our newly elected school board. So hope everyone has a great day. If you have questions, let me know. Have a great one, everyone.